So in this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers question, which is how we can change the color of the bar when we click on it. And as you can see here, we're changing it as we click, but also once we click on something else, it will eventually convert back to its original state. So what is very important here is that because this color here is matched with the legend here, so that's the only thing that we cannot avoid, but that is basically the only thing. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to explore how to highlight the bar on click in Chart.js. So the first thing that we need is we need to get our default code, which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started, which you can also find in the description box. You have the link in there as well. So scroll down and then get this code here, copy this. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video that explains it all. So then I will just put it in here and once I did that I will cut out that put that one in there save this refresh there we are so now we have this and what I want to do now is to create the interactivity on the click to do this we need to make sure that charge.js or not even specifically charge.js but the canvas understands that if we click on it that effect will be triggered so to do this we need to scroll down here and then in here, we need to do some adjustments. I'm going to cut out this. And then I will type in here CTX, comma. And then what I will do here is a constant. And this constant will call CTX. And of course, we will paste then here the items in. So the reason why is because I need to have the CTX, which is just specifically the canvas with the ID of my chart. Why I need this is because I want to trigger or analyze the click once I click on this. If I will keep it in here, what will happen, it will not only analyze the click, but it will start to redraw everything, and I don't want that. In this case, I need to split this out and make sure we only register the click. So now we have it registered, we can now start to continue on. We can just say here, CTX on click equals, and let's say click handler, and a click handler is just a function. But if you would say, what is a click handler? Well, basically a click handler is, or a handler is doing something consistently. So a click handler will do a thing once it's been clicked. Very straightforward. So for this, I'm going to create a function. And then I'm just going to put in here some enter. So that looks slightly better. And I'm going to grab the click handler. And in the click handler, for now, I'll just say here, first of all, console log. I click on the canvas. All right, save that, refresh, open up developer tab. And all I want to do now is if I click on it, there you are. You can see here it's being registered. However, what it doesn't register is that, for example, if I click on this bar, it doesn't register where I click exactly. It just only understands I've clicked on the canvas. Well, that is the first step, figuring out if the canvas can understand our click events. So the next thing now is to start to interpret it, the location of it, and whatever the location is, that will become very important. So for that, what I'm going to use is a very nice functionality that the Chart.js API has. So I'm going to type in here constant, and let's say here constant will be points. And this points here is the following. You see my chart, which is basically this here. Then we say here dot get elements at event for mode basically this is a function built in in the chart.js api and what it really does is it will get the element and when we're talking about element we're talking about these bars here get the element at a event for mode so basically the event and what is the event here in this case our event will become the click so we're going to type in here click so we will trigger this once we click on it and how are we going to measure it based on the nearest this means if it's nearest it's simply this when we hover over it here we are here you can see your nearest it will be triggered for example with the the bar and the tooltip the moment i am on this bar or on this element or very near to it or just crossing here on this specific line at that moment we get the trigger of getting the nearest tooltip that matches with it. So in this case, I want the nearest is the purple bar, and that's why you show the tooltip. So the same methodology will be now, but then on clicking, when we click on here, it will be the nearest. So what I want to do more is put a comma, 
curly braces, and then in here I'll say intersect. And intersect will set on true. And what this truly means is the following: intersecting about a croc a intersection or a, a crossing. So when you intersect, basically you cross. And what I what I refer to intersect basically this here. The moment I intersect on the element, the tooltip shows. This only happens when I touches the, the element. So that's an intersect. So I'm intersect, so I'm crossing the element with my mouse. And then you get this effect. Alright? So that would mean here. So that would be only on true. That would mean that if I would click, I must click within the, basically in the uh, area where the element is located. So once I have this, the next thing what I want to do here, I need to make sure that this curly braces is there. Alright? And then we say comma and then we set here true. So once we did this, we can now start to look at it or start to work with it. So I'm going to do here a console log and then here I'll just say points. If I save this now, and if I click here, you can see here, all right, click is not defined. Uh, let's see, is this correct? Uh, I, th I think this is fine. If I click here, uh, no, all right. So we have something here that is not working. So let me check. All right, so of course, I just realized I forgot this one. Sorry about that. So we need to say here the click, which is basically here on this. When we unclick, the event is the click, and that is here. This is a reference to this here, and this reference is the event itself. So this is very important. So once we do this, you click on this, you can see here now it works. It shows undefined, and here, if we are intersecting, it will show the exact information of our element and everything in here. And this is very important because now we can start to work with our adjustments. So what I want to do here is the following. We have here the console log with the points. And if we would do even like this, points is only here. It will just show, you can see here, here there is nothing, no array, but here it recognized. So now we've intersected the area and we have selected a specific bar. And then you can see here index number six, all the information we need for our bar. So we have this now, and then what I want to do is the following. Because what I really want to do here, let's look at it. We need here the data index, or the data set index, and the index. And the index here in this case is for this one here, which is number six, which is correct, because this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there we are. Now we can keep on doing this. Let me just select these all. So now what I want to do, of course, is then Based on this, we can see on which item we have selected. So once we have selected one, that specific item will change color. All right. So to do this, what I'm going to say here is my chart. And then we say here dot data and then data sets. And then what I need to do here is to get the index number. Well, for the data set, when we select on one, let's click on this, open up this. Uh, all right, let's open up that one. We have here the data set index. All right, so we're going to grab this. So to do this, we need to, of course, have the points as well. So we need like this. So we're going to put it there because the starting point is the points for the console log. So then we have dot, and then we're going to say here the following. What I want to do here is the background color. And then what I will say here is the index. So then it's not this, but the index itself. So we get here the points dot index. And once we did this, we can indicate here, for example, the color black. So if I save that here, if I click on that. All right, can I read property of undefined, 104. So let's see here what, what is going on here. Points. Oh, I realize we need to make in here because we need to show that this is an index. So, all right, this is undefined, and it does here something, but of course we're not done yet. And if you hover over, you can see here it just does something. So what I want to do here, reading of the data set index, if we select this and if we select this, here we get no error. But if we click here, we get an error. So what we need to do now, I guess first of all, this one here should be removed, I realize, because this is probably giving us the error. 
but not even so we have still something here that is incorrect all right so what is the error here what i need to do is use an if statement and this if statement needs to protect us because what is happening right now we have these points here but if there is no index what happened it will give this entire error so i want to put this or nest it within here to avoid the error so if i save this now refresh there you are you can see here now it starts to work but it only works if we hover our way so and the reason why because we didn't do yet in my chart dot update here because we need to update the item if you don't update what will happen is when you move away it will create a resize or refresh effect why because of the tooltip that creates the effect so now if i do this it will now work immediately so that works but of course we're not done here and the reason why we're not done here is i want these colors to be set back the moment we change it or basically when we click on something else i want to convert this back so how do we do this sadly enough i'm not able to find a, a very good solution so this is the best solution i have so i'm going to just copy all of this and I'm going to put this array in here and I have tried other ways to duplicate the array and even to, to make a separate independent array to duplicate that it just doesn't work so maybe in the near future I might have something but for now I'm going to work like this I'll say a constant and just say here color and in here I'm going to say equal this specific array semicolon here so if I save this now, refresh, click on this, then I click here, all right, so you can see here it still doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work yet, of course, is we need to assign this. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to say here, my chart dot config dot data dot data sets and this data sets here is zero and then dot background color so what i'm really doing here is i'm going to get the reference here of this and just reassign the color of this one here the moment i do this and then now i click on it you can see here now it will move nicely and we can just maybe organize it slightly nicer just put this down oh no we have to put it here why we have the if statement here that will make it black so first of all we want to update if ever there would be any other color we need to update them back to original state and then here we're going to grab the color we have of, or we want to change the color of the clicked bar and that's basically how you do this so you can see here and this converts this all of course if you change the color of this one this here will be changed as well so maybe the legend needs to be removed to avoid that color confusion and it's basically how you can play around with this so if you enjoyed this video maybe besides this maybe you want to create something like a clickable effect with a link in there as well for that i have a another video that's about how to create clickable bar chart with link in chart chairs, which is also very similar to this except that we do some tiny adjustments on it highly recommended to explore as well